Hi guys, it's Human from Return the Boon. Uh, it's been a while that I posted any videos and just to be honest, my kind of broken wrist has uh, kind of depressed me uh, and just haven't been in the mood, but I've been collecting a lot of videos. I've got a lot of stuff to share with you. So there's a mixture of footage over uh, past few weeks. Um, but a lot of other stuff is just in bloom and it's um, it's a good is a good crop we are harvesting a lot and uh, both vegetables green vegetables kind of um, fruits green fruits and also um, tree you know fruits from tree so we will share some of that with you uh, over the course of uh, probably next few videos because I've got a lot of footage to share with you. So as usual, uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the material. Give me a thumbs up and feel free to share uh, the video and the channel with your family and friends. Today we're gonna harvest this um, smaller dwarf cherry tree. Um, each of our three, we have four trees and apparently each one is a different variety. So we don't wanna mix them. So we're gonna pick each separately and use whatever we have and, and then store the rest in the freezer. I wonder how much cherry we're gonna get. Uh -huh. The dwarf tree is almost all picked. And I did some quality control. And it tastes delicious. <laughs> So, <laughs> so okay. this is our first tree and uh, off we go to the uh, other ones. So coming, uh, coming to this side of the garden, Katrina is actually under the netting. The, um, the tree to our right, this one was already picked. So this is kind of empty and we've got two other trees here. And apparently these are different species, so we kind of store them separately because um, they kind of taste different. Some of them we're going to use for pie and some for a compote and some for just kind of fresh fruit eating. So different varieties. So I guess uh, I'll go and help Trina as best as I can with my, um, you know, disabled hand uh, and probably just do some quality control so I'll see you in a minute I would say we've done about uh, maybe two-thirds of the tree and uh, we've got some kind of on the top a little bit hard to reach but our uh, basket is filling up nicely and um, we had done the tree to the right uh, a few days ago. So I would say we got probably two, two full baskets with all the cherries. These are mm, a little bit more tart than the first one. So I think these will be good for compoting and uh, for pie and whatnot. And the uh, dwarf tree for just eating fresh. All right, so this is the next level cleanup just to make sure that all the uh, little leaves and stems are off and get the harvest ready for, I guess, freezing some of it and some of it goes straight into the kitchen. So let's take a look, take a closer look. Oh. That's quite a bit. Yeah. Wow. No, you haven't seen all of it. Oh, wow. Excellent. Whoa. Nice. 
now you're talking. <laughs> oh, wow, fantastic. Good job. Chris, is this normal uh, for the season? Is it more yeah, no, or less? Is it about the same as last year? Oh, it's a few more than last year. It's yeah, more than last kind. year? Uh-huh, all right. Cool, so we beat the birds. Yep. All right. The net did the job. The net did the job. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. So here, Trina has already started uh, the beats and she's like halfway down the aisle. So let us what that looks like, Trina. Okay, here I'll show you. Uh, Alright, that's, well, that's a decent size, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So we're clearing this aisle or row okay. so that we can plant another row of kale because we've got more that need to be planted out. So we're I have to do clear more kale. This. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, okay they're a different ones. size. Those yeah. oh, are small ones. We will boil those and then boil them. Yeah. Or you can pickle them. Yeah, so you can pickle ferment. the ones. And we also um, use the leaves and even the wow. stems. Oh wow, hang That's on. Hold that one. <laughs> Let's see how that is. That is. Good size, wow, excellent. Okay, that was a good surprise. <laughs> yeah, so we're not gonna, pretty much gonna use everything, the leaves, the stalks, everything of that. So nothing's gonna go to waste. Well, well done. So you already planted the kale. These are like red kale, aren't they? The stems. Yeah, it looks like purple. Purple kale, okay. Yeah, yeah they are. A little bit pink. Oh, look forward to that. That looks great. So we've left. These and what are you gonna plant in this the row? The rest, the leftover kale. Oh, le oh okay. So I've more kale. Like Fantastic. Maybe about so eight kale months. is gonna be kind of like a winter crop. So they would take probably two months, three months yeah. to really. But that will be more like a September mm. harvest. And then we've still got our great. Right, we've still got more beets and carrots. More beets in the back, yeah. That's right. Those and are then more beets. this is the next lot of cabbages. These are cabbages. You, we did that a couple of days ago, which will look like this. So we will harvest these cabbages in maybe four weeks or five weeks, and then the other cabbages will see us through early winter. Great. Apples are uh, coming along. It's this pretty good. Bush needs to be picked. And this is a gooseberry bush. Did you pick some already? Yeah. Well, I don't know whether you guys can make it out, but you can see the fruits on that one. Yeah, it's getting nice and yellow and yummy. Very nice. So that's going to be nice for making uh, compote or pie. Be great. Here's, uh, here's Bahar picking the gooseberries. How much have you picked out so far? Not a whole lot. Okay. They're oh, just right. ripening, right. so I'm yeah, gonna they, leave some. They look nice and yellow. So yes. Good. So I'm just checking them to see how soft they are. Okay. And then leaving the ones that need a couple more days in the sun. All right. I think we got about how many bushes we have? Like four. Four, yeah. Four, four. bushes. And they're all coming in at different times. I've already finished that one, picking that one. Okay. Um, but this one, I think, needs a little bit longer. All right. That's pretty good. So that's the gooseberry harvest. And now we have moved on to the red currants. Those must be very finicky to pick. Well, 
You can pick them in little bunches, oh, okay. almost like mini bunches of grapes. Oh, okay. But yes, they are finicky to pick. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that, I can't see. And I'm like, looking for the really dark red ones. That? Yeah. Oh, dark ones. Okay. Yeah. I mean, these are actually quite sour. Mm. I don't think they are. I don't think any of them would be very sweet. I mean, I love sour fruit, but you can you know, add a little bit of honey or syrup or sugar. Uh, Chris likes to cook them down, so kind of like a compote, and uh, just pour it over some Greek yogurt or vanilla ice cream, or you make a um, tart with it. And we used the uh, remainder of last year's harvest that was in the freezer and we made wine with it. So you've already seen that. I'll probably give you an update on the wine later. See what that looks like. But it's fermenting nicely and bubbling. And I checked them the other day. So I'll update you probably on the next episode. All right, that looks cool. Looks like you're going to be at this for a while. It's, so. not a, it's not a fast <laughs> harvest. No. All right, well, uh, take a look at your harvest when you're done. Thank you. This is uh, Bahar's method for uh, taking all the fruits out. She uses a fork. I didn't know that. <laughs> that is very smart. Wow. Okay. Excellent. Very efficient. Very cool. Here's Katrina is uh using our makeshift homemade fruit picker using a bottle of water with cut out put it at the end of the hole and uh, she's making a bit of a mess of it I just picked six or five in a row and everything worked out well I can put six in here, like this one, this is easy. Okay, what's in the uh, 
pickling okay liquid pickling spice uh -huh. cinnamon ginger lemon peel um, crushed cardamom cinnamon stick and vinegar and red chili and red, chili. red wine vinegar red and wine. sugar and salt and sugar and salt wow okay. and i've boiled this up okay and then now i'm just you like sterilize the, the yeah the jars, jars from ikea i can't believe how cheap these jars are these are proper mason jars and two liters each for one pound for two pounds sorry the one liter version is one pound and the two liter version is two pounds so fantastic anyway this is the pickling process and we are gonna do um, other things with the rest of the green gauge The girls have decided to repatch the earth oven while we are waiting for the, the big one to be completed after my uh, wrist is all fixed up. So they're really working the mud. That looks pretty good. Okay, I think that's good. And the old oven is a little bit uh, kind of in a sad state, so that needs to just get all patched up and all the cracks patched up. If everything works okay, then we're gonna have a fire it tomorrow and see what we can do with it. So let's have a go at it. This is the consistency we need. All right, good luck. Yeah, seems very therapeutic to work with your hands. So the girls have basically put another skin of mud on the oven, which looks pretty good. Looks really good. So we are hoping that this will be dry enough by tomorrow. I hope it's not gonna rain. And um, if it is, we'll fire it and um, start using it. All right, so we are firing the oven. The girls kind of repatched the oven yesterday and we're firing it today. Let's see how it works. You can see the smoke coming out from the front. That means that the flue is cold. Otherwise it should be going straight up. So as it warms up, then the smoke will not come from the front. It will go up the flue. Actually the flue is working pretty well. So if I pull back a bit, then you guys can see better. Oh. All right, well. My TP collapsed. Your TP collapses, okay. We just need to kind of feed it so it keeps going. That's all right. <laughs> 